A key partner in the war against corruption in the parastatal sector is the Inspectorate of State Corporations. I am pleased to inform you that under its new domicile in the office of the Prime Cabinet Secretary, the Inspectorate is undergoing a comprehensive revamp and rejuvenation to strengthen its capacity to take on corruption and misappropriation of funds in state corporations. This rejuvenation is not a symbolic posture or gesture. We mean business. The revamp is our firm declaration of commitment to upholding integrity, transparency, and accountability in state corporations. It is part of the assignment of my office to restore public trust in government institutions, even as we shape a culture of accountability. Under the provisions of the State Corporations Act, CAP 446 of the Laws of Kenya, the Inspector General Corporations is vested with extensive powers that include the authority to call for and inspect all relevant records, documents, and premises of state corporations, as well as attend their meetings if necessary. Furthermore, the Inspector General Corporations possesses the authority to disallow unlawful expenditures and surcharge individuals responsible for unauthorized or negligent actions. We are now actively engaged in holding accountable those individuals within state corporations who engage in malpractices. One of the most critical powers vested in the Inspector General is, of course, as I said, the authority to surcharge. Regrettably, because this authority has not been used for years, it has contributed to the inactivity of the State Corporations Appeals Tribunal. The tribunal has been non-functional due to the expiration of the tenures of the chairman and members. I am happy to announce that the tribunal will shortly be operationalized. In this regard, I assure the country that surcharges will soon be part of the arsenal of weapons in our war against corruption. Corruption poses a severe existential threat to our aspirations and all agencies charged with preventing it must now be put on red alert. You must ask yourselves why corruption thrives in our midst despite the taxpayer footing the bills of many anti-corruption agencies. Research indicates that corruption undermines development and service delivery by diverting development resources to personal gain of a few individuals. Loss of tax revenue, increasing the cost of doing business, and therefore deterring investments, distorting public expenditure, and allocation of talent, reducing economic efficiency, and slowing down administrative processes. All these drugs and makes the implementation of government policies and programs a most odious, infect, ineffective undertaking. I confidently speak to this because I have been a victim of this maleficence in the setting up of the office of the Prime Cabinet Secretary. Parliament should fast track the Conflict of Interest Bill 2023. This is one particular area which has a significant impact on corruption that I am requesting the National Assembly to look into. This is the Conflict of Interest Bill 2023, which was approved by the Cabinet on the 28th of February 2023 and subsequently transmitted to the August House. The bill seeks to provide a framework for the management of conflict of interest on the part of state and public officers arising from the discharge of their official duties. It introduces strong legal safeguards against real, apparent, 
of potential conflict between the private interests of public servants on one hand and the public interests and their official duties on the other hand. Once enacted into law, it would mark the end of the era where public servants would subordinate their official duties to the private commercial interests. And the young people here gave a very apt demonstration of what this is all about. The bill has undergone its first reading before the National Assembly and is in the pipeline for the second reading. I humbly request that the House fast tracks this. There are also some retrogressive bills. As I talk of that conflict of interest bill, let me also highlight out that there are two bills currently before the National Assembly which raise significant concerns in the ongoing battle against corruption. Both of those bills are titled the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Amendment Bill 2023. One is proposed by Honorable Peter Kaluma, and the other six amendments presented by Honorable Geoffrey Ruku. These bills, if passed and enacted into law, have the potential to reverse the progress achieved in the fight against corruption. Honorable Kaluma's bill aims to amend the Anti-Corruption Economic Crimes Act of 2023 by removing the provision disqualifying individuals convicted of corruption or economic crimes from holding public office. On the other hand, Ruku's bill seeks to decriminalize certain aspects of public procurement, property disposal, contract tendering, fund management and expenditure. If these proposed amendments are accepted, they will open the door for individuals with corruption histories to hold public office and offer significant leniency to those inclined toward corrupt practices within the public sector. This is not to say I do not respect the independence of our government's branches. I recognize the substantial interdependence among them. Therefore, I kindly request the two members of parliament to consider withdrawing their bills. We must remember that we can only defeat corruption if we stand together in unity of purpose and effort. Our citizens must also be fully engaged in the fight against corruption by first and foremost saying no to corruption and secondly reporting corruption to EACC whenever they witness it. Citizens must also understand that one of the most effective ways to contribute to the, to the fight against corruption is by electing leaders of unwavering integrity to public office and ensuring that state officers are not only qualified but also maintain their suitability throughout their tenure. Consequently, the government will provide ample resources to empower the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to effectively implement the civic preventive strategies outlined in the strategic plan. I do agree with you that uh, we must not politicize um, the war against corruption. And nobody is immune, and no institution is immune. And no nation is immune. We have had uh, in Europe the conversation around uh, questions for money, where Parliament has been roped in. Our county assemblies are not immune. Our legislature is not immune. Sometimes you might think it's madness, but uh, there's method in it. When somebody knows that ESCC is investigating, somebody then files a petition in parliament on a similar thing. 
It's not accidental. It is designed to confuse the process so that the investigative agency is slowed down from pursuing what it should be pursuing. So that one can say, wait a minute, you can't pursue this, it's before a committee of parliament. So there are intrigues. And all these intrigues, we all have to work together and see how we can uh, uh, resolve them. Do what you have to do, now and tomorrow, and the day after, without any hesitation whatsoever. Because you owe it to Kenyans, you owe it to the young people who are here. We must get them jobs. We must get them a better life. And we can only do that if we can slay the dragon of corruption. Thank you. And with those many remarks, may I now declare the EACC strategic plan of 2023-2028 officially launched. Asante Nisan. Between 1993 and 1997, uh, when I was uh, the Minister for Finance, we were having serious challenges as a country because we didn't have a framework to fight corruption, as it were. This entity was non-existent, and there were a lot of issues. The journey to get to where you are uh, as ESCC started actually with a conversation in the Treasury with our development partners, the IMF, the World Bank. We started this conversation and we started figuring out how can we intensify the war against corruption. And that was the beginning of the conversation of what was called CASA, which mutated into what we have here. And uh, the initial blocks of building this legislation were actually being, was a strong conversation that was taking place in the Treasury building uh, when I was there. And at that time, we roped in the Solicitor General, uh, who was uh, Justice Ringera, and the AG. And that was the beginning of the building of the blocks of what has today become the EACC. And why did I say I wanted to uh, have a few minutes after this to bring out some of these things? It's because even then, it was not easy to actually get the political buy-in for those initial steps of legislation. We had many battles at cabinet level at that time to try and get the draft, the initial bill that went to parliament, go through cabinet. Because as the late, the late uh, Anyona said, corruption is like a hydra. So the challenges you're going through, just confirm that, that to get the structure and to get it right, when it means fighting against corruption, is a process. It is not an overnight issue. It is a process, and you must keep pounding at it. We must keep on putting our extra hours in there in order to deal with this menace. To members of the Fourth Estate, I want to emphasize the interlocking role you play in the ongoing battle against corruption. Unless you choose to abscond, you are the watchdogs of the society. You have the power to change attitudes, share vital information, and shine a light on corruption in all its forms. 
By exposing wrongdoings and holding the corrupt accountable, you inspire citizens to adopt a culture free of corruption. Your investigative reporting and deductive truth shine a veneer of legitimate concern in our collective efforts to foster transparency and integrity in our great nation. Let us work together to build a Kenya where honesty and integrity prevail and where corruption finds no refuge in propaganda. Corruption erodes the very foundations of our society, hindering progress and prosperity. And I must reiterate that the war against corruption must also take a whole of society and a whole of government approaches through the collective action of both state and non-state actors. Whole of society, whole of government, and I want to add one more, open government. This unity of purpose is a concept we must fully embrace in our battle against corruption. We are all stakeholders in this fight, government institutions, civil society, the private sector, and every citizen. By standing united, we send a clear message that corruption will find no refuge in our land. Together, we can create a future where honesty, integrity, and accountability prevail. In this war, there can be no room for fear or favor. The EACC is an independent commission, and it has a solemn duty to pursue justice without hesitation or bias. No individual, regardless of their position or influence, should be considered a sacred cow, immune to accountability. Corruption erodes the very foundations of our society, hindering progress and prosperity. And I must reiterate that the war against corruption must also take a whole of society and a whole of government approaches through the collective action of both state and non-state actors. Whole of society, whole of government, and I want to add one more, open government. This unity of purpose is a concept we must fully embrace in our battle against corruption. We are all stakeholders in this fight government institutions, civil society, the private sector, and every citizen. By standing united, we send a clear message that corruption will find no refuge in our land. Together, we can create a future where honesty, integrity, and accountability prevail. In this war, there can be no room for fear or favor. The EACC is an independent commission, and it has a solemn duty to pursue justice without hesitation or bias. No individual, regardless of their position or influence, should be considered a sacred cow, immune to accountability. The EACC must investigate and prosecute cases of corruption without prejudice, upholding the law for ill all citizens. Parliament should fast track the Conflict of Interest Bill 2023. This is one particular area which has a significant impact on corruption that I am requesting the National Assembly to look into. And for politicians like myself, and I now speak as a very personal level, let us stop politicizing this. I've had my experience with the EACC. I've visited. I've written my statements. But if you have not done anything wrong, then you should not worry. Because these people are professional. They'll do their job. If you have nothing to worry about, you'll go home. If you have something to worry about, then I can't help you. <laughs> Neither can they help you. So these, these are the realities. But 
we, we should not say that because um, uh, these institutions are, are there, we should, we should try and throw mud at them. Because once you're in public office, invariably, you become a potential candidate at one time or the other for an explanation or the other. And if you've not done anything wrong, you should not worry. If you follow procedure, if you have followed the law, if you have operated within the rules, then you have nothing to worry about. So these are the things that we need to, to push out. And I can say confidently that even when I was having my escapades with the, the EACC or my surgeon with them, I was not in government. I had ceased being in government. So I was called. You honor the summons, you go there, you explain yourself, and you move on. Now, why do I say that? I say that so that people can move away from the notion of saying that I am politically targeted. If I was politically targeted, during the Kibaki government, maybe I'd have been incarcerated. But they were doing their job, and the late Kibaki did not interfere with the process. We went through it, and I walked away after due process. That's why I said it is so important for me to come here, because I can stand in front of you with my head high, saying that let us follow the law. This issue is not going to be a one-man show. It is not an EACC matter. As we've been told, we are only about 700 people uh, who are working in EACC. We are 45 million, 50, going to 50 million Kenyans. A significant percentage of those people are working day and night to steal our resources. 700 of us cannot stop them because we cannot be everywhere. But if we join hands, all of us, and we come to intolerant to corruption wherever we are, we can get rid of this thing. And so as we set this uh, strategic plan, we are going to be calling upon you at different, as different stakeholders so that you can help us in this fight against corruption, from the civil society to the media to the criminal justice sector to leaders in government and outside of it, let us all work together so that we can fight this vice and make Kenya the darling and the example of Africa. As a nation that is corruption free, we have everything going for us if only we disciplined ourselves. Impunity are men and women who have been given positions of authority, of power, of leadership, to help guide this nation to the place where it will deliver for the people of this nation. But instead of doing that, they use that power, that authority, that space, to steal the resources with wanton abandon, believing or knowing that there is nothing you can do to them. And so they do whatever they please because of the positions that they hold. And so we have, I have come across in my short while in office Cases of men and women who are in such places, but you can see they are using those offices, whether small or big, to steal from us. A second group of people are men and women who are simply greedy. Some of them have no office in government. Some of them have proxies in government. 
But these men and women are filthy rich. They are well resourced. They have money. They have property. They have wealth. But they are not satisfied. So they are looking for more. And they will look for every opportunity to steal from the public. Sometimes using proxies, sometimes directly. When you look at them, you wonder, what more do you want? You already have more than most Kenyans. So why are you putting your hands into the pot where all of us would like to eat from? It is greed. So in the last two decades, Kenya has covered a lot on the ground of its effort in the fight against corruption. Uh, somebody may say this is subject to argument. One person asked me, what is the progress in the fight against corruption in Kenya? And I keep on referring, some of my colleagues know what I talk about. I say, look here, uh, the clock has got several. There is the one for the hour, the one for the minutes, and the one for the seconds. Kenyans wants to see the fight against corruption in the way the, the stick for the seconds move, because it's so visible. Uh, for our side, we say it is moving in the right direction, of course, at the pace of the, one, the, 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 the stick for the, the hour. It takes time. You cannot see it visibly moving, but we are heading in the right direction. How do we go about it? We may have the best strategic plan on Earth. We can have all the instruments, but I keep on saying that the fight against corruption is just like the way a human being manages uh, a lifestyle disease or the way our children get uh, educated. And uh, Professor Kiyama is here. He will attest to that. You can have the best school, but a school depends on four factors. The parents or guidance, the, gu the, the, the guidance, the, the gui I mean the, the guardian or parents, the pupil, the teachers, and the facilities. If you have the four, you will have the best results. Uh, likewise, for you to manage a lifestyle disease, there's the doctor, there's yourself, and there's the environment. The doctor will give you some pills, and he will tell you, don't take this food, make sure you don't take a lot of salt, and then there's that self-discipline of yourself and those who live immediate, uh, immediate family members. So if you're told, don't take alcohol, and when you go home, the first thing you open the, fr uh, the fridge, is full of bottles of Tuskers and what, uh, wine and whatever, you get tempted. So the people who are stay with you contribute for you not to control that disease. At a national level, in strategic level, let us look at the fight against corruption in the three main aspects, which I keep on talking about. It may not be in my speech, but I really emphasize that if we want to counter this monster called corruption, there are three main pillars the political culture of this country must change. If for you to get a political seat, you must go on and bribe, uh, use uncouth means, uh, bribing, maybe you want to become an MP, you want to become a governor. The only sensible thing for that man when he takes over the office, he has three priorities. He will tell you, I want to, uh, I'm bringing development. But in his heart, that person will have three priorities. One is to recoup what he has spent. Two, he has to accumulate for the next election. Three, if he's a strategist, he has to now think of how he can have extra so that in case he is not re-elected, he is safe, money-wise. So if that political culture of bribery and token is not going to end in this country, please don't make noise saying our politicians are corrupt. The politicians are a product of the society. It's not them. They, are not, they, they don't drop from heaven. It's us who make them. Then we have a second option, that is the public. The public must change its culture. There was a time in this country where citizens decided to arrest policemen taking bribes. It was a short-term instinct, but it happened, and policemen refused to take bribes along the roads. Today, they take it in the open. 
and even if they look at you and you have any no 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 problem they will tell you mze hauna kitu kidogo tu uniangalie uh, and that matatu that is being stopped it has an engineer it has a professor it has an ex military officer and we keep quiet we don't make any noise our only noise that we have is to blame the police i am not defending the police but the police becomes a product of a rotten society the last one which i whispered with to the prime cabinet secretary is about the institutions that we have the institutions that we have must be strengthened and i keep on taking pride that this country if there's anything good about this country is that this country has got a constitution that has established well done, well laid institutions that should function for the prosperity of this country so that's what i'm talking about that the strategic pillar must look at the political culture and the public they must change on how they do their business and their support and then we look at institutions that is the judiciary the odpp the office of the auditor general and all other uh, groups and uh, your excellency i can assure you of our commitment and dedication to execute our mandate in line with our core values of uh, fidelity to the law integrity teamwork innovation professionalism and courage uh, sir being one of the senior politicians in this country there has always been noise that uh, when we sometimes nab some powerful people the next thing is that we are being misused uh, politically ESCC is a very neutral professional organization that works within the law and we do carry out our mandate in a very neutral way without any political interference